Well, hello, this is Catherine McDermott again at the Angel Fire Art Space. And look, this beautiful image that you see before you right now is one of Jackie Binford Bell's really highly creative poured watercolor paintings. And Jackie's here with me today, and she's going to show us how to do that. So let's say hello to Jackie. And here's Jackie. Say hello. Hello. How are you doing today? So. We're, we're doing good, so we're going to start now. I'm going to look down at your uh, painting that you're about to work on. I want you to explain to our friends here how you're, how you're going to proceed. Okay. Well, I was one of those people that used to always do the skies last. I always painted the foregrounds first, and then I filled in with the sky. And sometimes doing the sky, you mess up the foreground. And then through taking classes with Catherine McDermott, I found out how to pour skies and now I do my skies first, and then I do my foregrounds. And very often what happens, sometimes accidentally with the sky, ends up determining where I'm going with the foreground. At any rate, in this particular instance, I've laid out the drawing, which is uh, one of our mission churches here in New Mexico. And then I've uh, applied masking where I don't want the sky to go. Okay, why don't you explain what masking is? Okay, masking is a, sort of a very sophisticated and highly expensive rubber cement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that you can paint on, onto the canvas or paper, and it blocks where the paint's going to go. And you can, after it's totally dry, you can take your finger or an eraser and take all that masking up, like you used to uh, ball up rubber cement when you were a kid. Oh, perfect. And then you can go ahead and paint the foreground, even the stuff that is under the masking. It doesn't stain or anything like that. It's a wonderful little stuff. I use it over and over again as I'm painting different details in the painting. But primarily at this point, what I've got outlined is the moon on this one, and, uh, or the setting sun, depending on how this turns out. And I've eliminated the uh, church detail the trees and the mountains. And what we're going to try to do is pour a sunrise or sunset in the area that I have open from the masking. Okay, very what good. Here first is pouring on water into the area I want to cover. And I have one watercolor brush that has never touched paint. Oh, I lied, it has some yellow on it. Okay. I find that there's a couple colors like blue that never come out of brushes. I don't care how well you clean. So I always try to keep like blue brushes separate from other colors I'm working. Okay. Now you're just painting with water right now, correct? That's correct. I'm just painting with water to get it all spread out. And basically I did that because on canvas the water doesn't spread quite as easily the first layer as it does on like paper. You need to help it along to get everything sort of wet so that everything else flows evenly. And there's probably not using too much water on this part. Okay? So then my base color with this one is yellow. And I'm going to take the yellow with the eyedropper and go along where that goes. Then with a totally wet brush, move it around. And don't worry about getting on the areas that you've masked off. So try not to get over the areas you've masked off. <laughs> and then to make everything blend well, I have this really fancy technique with blending liquid. Instead of mixing it with the paint, I just pour it in. And it, it sort of starts doing some of its own little thing. And then we're going to put cyclamen up here, which is a pink. And then stir. 
Now these are liquid watercolors that you're using. Yes. They're these not ink, even though they look like they're in ink bottles. No, they're already liquefied. And if you don't work with liquid watercolors, you can take your, your pigmented watercolor and go ahead and, and mix it up. But you want something really nice and intense to do this with. This is not a pastel -y thing. It's a little bit like playing with finger paints, only you're not finger painting. And then I'm going to add some, this is pansy, which is a purple color. And Now the advantage of this is you don't end up with brush strokes. You end up with a, really something that, that doesn't look like a brush has ever touched it. And then if you get in an area that doesn't have enough water, you can spritz on with a mist. Long here with a few areas that aren't flowing quite the way I think I want to <laughs> have them work. And we now two tips are for when ink goes where you don't want it to go, or watercolor goes where you don't want it to go. You can take and pick up watercolor so it's not as intense in areas. Or if it's pooling someplace or you have a, in this particular instance I seem to have a couple spots of paint that were not as liquid as they should be. Love how that's moving. Yeah, you sort of, uh, I like to think of it as try to figure out which way the wind would have been blowing the clouds. Okay, now one of the things with canvas you don't get with paper is it wants to pull right around the edge. So if you take a Q-tip and run just along that edge, it'll take that away, and then we'll sit it down and see what, now. Now why are you working with this on bubble wrap? Uh, that's a little sort of an accidental happening I found out, is this way the, the poured watercolor winds up in the little ruts around the bubble wrap. It doesn't get the back of my canvas quite as messy. Uh -huh. Because the canvas flows on the top. I'm not saying you won't get some mess, but you don't get near as much mess as you get when you're just working on, on pure plastic. And that means your hands don't get as messy either. So if you have to sit and touch your canvas. Now I'm going to add some more pink in here, I think. And some more water with mister. Now one of the things I found that when you're spraying with the spray bottle, do not spray toward the stuff that you haven't painted. Because when you do, you end up with little splatters all over the stuff you haven't painted if you, if you spray away. Okay, we're back with Jackie, and she's going to lift off some of the masking that she had on this canvas originally before she did her pour that we just saw. So you see it's kind of like, you know, rubber now, cement. Yeah, I don't want to pull off on the church. I just want to pull off some of this that's on the moon. 
which I think, because of the way the colors turned out, is probably going to be the sun, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you have to sort of be flexible with your subject, <laughs> you know, sort of thing, but uh, some of this is still a little wet, um, so I'm trying to take it off gently. Okay. So there's still masking on the church. Um, and I'm going to take some clear water here and I'm going to start by, with the Q-tip, softening some of these colors that went over the masking. Taking off the edges of them a little. Like I said, yellow you can take off. Uh, watercolor canvas allows you to lift. It doesn't allow you to lift everything. But some colors lift easier than the others. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is take and... Here we're doing just plain water back in to the sun area. And I'm avoiding being right next to my sky. And I'm going to go back here with a little bit of the yellow, but not very much because I want the, the sun to be a different color. And float it with more water. This is not the point you want your cat to walk in <laughs> over the top of the canvas. And then I'm going to take some of the pink, the cyclamen, and put down here on the bottom edge, away from the pink on the top edge. And I'm just floating this around. I don't want it to look too sp specific. Now, this is what I think is the fun part. I had discovered this by accident. And this is a powdered um, pale gold uh, mineral. And I just stick my brush in there and then I just let it do its thing floating on the water. Very cool. You can even splatter some. This defines my edge, my sun. If it was a moon, I would have used silver. And I don't want to cover the whole thing. I just want to make it look like a NASA photograph. <laughs> Very cool. And when that's all dry, I will then take silver and gold and fill in around and edge it like on the ones back here. Okay, I'm going to go back there and look at those. And then we're going to wrap this up. And you'll come back when you finish this. Yes, I will. I'll bring it back for you to see. Very good. Thank you very much, Jackie. Wasn't this fun? Let's go look at some of the other work. Okay, now here we are. Jackie, why don't you tell us about the first piece here? Okay. Uh, Past Reflections was inspired by being on Lake Powell with my sister in a record year for rainfall. And we had all this rain and everything all the time. So, And here, not only uh, have I floated the gold on the moons, like I, here, but I also floated it in the water and up in the sky to give that sort of cosmic. Look. All this uh, metallic here and here and down through here is floated uh, uh, gold powder, just like I just showed you on, on the previous moon. And I put it up there to give it that sort of cosmic uh, uh, Milky Way look, for cool. want of a better term. And then in this one, Canyon Reflections, which was one of the first ones I actually played with the floating. I used the silver to float on this one. And it's a cooler color than with the gold. 
But this is uh, all this down here is all poured or floated painting to give it that watery look. Where up here I use brush strokes, the sky is floated. Use brush strokes in the canyons, but down here there's virtually no brush strokes. All this was poured in different sections. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Now let's look at this one up here. Now this one uses a lot more brush stroke. Now this is where I discovered a very interesting thing. It's because I've always used ink and watercolor, and very often the ink is something I add after the watercolor. But in this particular one, because of the colors I had available, I tried using a purple ink with a blue watercolor, and they don't mix. <laughs> Inks and acrylic, and acrylic doesn't blend or doesn't mix, but you can end up with some interesting little effects that way. It almost looks like dark clouds or something. So at one point I thought, uh oh, I ruined it. And then I thought, well, no, I'll just work with that. But uh, you have to really know your mediums, I think. You know, you really have to know the quality. Some colors don't play well together. And ink and watercolor don't play well together. So you have to be aware of that when you're playing. That's a really good tidbit. Very good. So when you're working with watercolor, you're sticking with the watercolor, not combining it with ink, because the colors don't blend. Yes. Good thing to know. <laughs> well, I hope you'll come back and show us your finished product and tell us how you finished it, where you put your brush, and what you used to make it happen. Okay. Once again, thank you, Jackie. Thank Have a great you, day. Catherine.